Hey there, welcome to this new series of tutorials on XMPP. I have been getting many questions about the details of XMPP, things like connection, how are users authenticated, and things like that. I mainly get these questions from users who are using libraries to build the XMPP software, and they don't have a touch with the low-level internals of XMPP. And I thought it might be a good idea to start a new series of tutorials on XMPP to explore those things. And as usual, as you make a video series like this, you get a chance to learn many things you didn't know about. So I am looking forward to that. And if you are interested in XMPP and the details of how it works, please do subscribe because I'm going to be publishing many videos on the topic. Okay, so let's get started. XMPP is a protocol that allows us to build instant messaging systems. It is a blueprint that we follow to build chat applications. I can write an XMPP application for Android. I can write an XMPP application for iOS. And all these applications follow the same protocols. So you can imagine chat app that is installed on your Android phone. And you have another chat app that is installed on your Windows computer or whatever. And these apps need to speak a common set of language to be able to exchange data. That's the big idea behind XMPP, a blueprint for exchanging messages between systems. XMPP stands for Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol. And here you should emphasize extensible because XMPP is built to be extensible. If you look back in the past, XMPP started to be designed in back in 2000. And uh, in 2008, we started having mobile phones. These mobile phones started to introduce new kind of problems that people couldn't think of in 2000. XMPP managed to survive these problems because it is extensible. People extended XMPP with features that allow it to be used on mobile phones, and we are using it today. The messaging part is self-explanatory, so it is the part that allows us to send messages to others using XMPP. Presence denotes online status in XMPP. So if you need to know that your contact is online before you send them a message, XMPP allows you to do that using Presence. And we're going to have a chance to look at this in the future, I guess. Okay, so now you have a big idea about XMPP. It is a protocol for building instant messaging applications. It stands for Extensible Messaging and Presence, and it uses XML under the hood. So now we look at the implementation stack of XMPP. On the lowest level, we have the protocol guidelines. You can actually visit one of these. So here we are. We are on the extensible messaging and presence protocol core part of XMPP. We're going to visit this in the course of this video series. And this is a guideline that we follow to build instant messaging applications. It might look scary for new users, but as you go through this, you really start pinning things together so that they can make sense. And we're going to go through this together and see how we can use this to build real apps. Okay, so at the low level, we have these guidelines, row protocol. These protocols are usually implemented into libraries on different platforms. You see that on the second layer, we have Windows, Mac, Linux, and whatever. Okay, so people build libraries that can be used on these platforms to build applications that you and I, end users, can use. And you see the layer of end users on top there. And you see a happy guy using an XMPP app. So this is the idea I want you to have. The XMPP standards or extension documents are implemented into libraries on different platforms. And uh, usually you see programmers using these libraries to build end-user applications. For example, if you look at Android, the library that is usually used on Android to build XMPP apps is called Smack. So you can search on GitHub to find it. It's a really cool library. And you and I can use that Smack library to write applications that run on desktop on top of the Java virtual machine or on Android on top of Dalvec. Now we look at the architecture of XMPP. Looking at the picture here, we have servers in the middle here. The yellow boxes here represent the servers. And we have clients in the form of desktop computers and mobile phones. You see 
a feature phone here and you see a smartphone here. And uh, client devices connect to servers and servers relay messages on behalf of the clients. So for example, if user one on desktop here wants to send a message to user two, the message goes through server one and it is then relayed to server two, which in turn delivers the message to user two. This is how XMPP works. And what we're going to look at specifically in this video series is how you connect to the server from the client. The entire process you go through to actually connect and be able to send messages to other people. We're also going to briefly touch on how servers talk to each other, but the real focus is on how clients connect to servers. When you think of XMPP, have this picture in mind. It's going to be easier on you. Building on the architecture of XMPP, we have this whole network of different devices that can talk to each other. And this is the real power of XMPP. For example, using an XMPP app that is running on Windows, you can talk to a user that is running an app that runs on Android and, and vice versa. You can even have things running on embedded devices today. So this is a really cool technology to have under the belt. Okay, so why should you care about XMPP? The first reason that comes to mind is if you base your work on XMPP, you're going to have a lot of the work already done for you and you're going to just focus on the user experience that you want to deliver. So that's one reason, having something already done that you can build your work upon. All you have to do is install a server somewhere in the cloud and uh, build your client to deliver the user experience that you want. The second thing XMPP gives us is flexibility. If you look at the apps that we use today, let's say you use WhatsApp and you don't like something WhatsApp does, what do you do? You really have no choice. You have to, to stick with that. With XMPP, it's not quite like that. And then with XMPP, if you don't like your XMPP client that you are running on Android, you can change to another client. All you have to do is uninstall that client that you don't like, download a new client that you like, log in with your XMPP JID and password, and you are in, you are talking to your users. The other thing that XMPP supports is uh, being able to connect to your account on multiple devices. So let's say I have an account of user at server.com. I can connect from my desktop computer. I can connect from my Android phone. I can connect from my tablet. And all these accounts are going to sync messages. This is, um, this is the experience you don't see in many locations. And what makes this powerful is that, let's say I have a server in country A, I built it and uh, I want to serve my users. And uh, your family in country B has another server. And if you decide to talk to each other, you can talk to each other without a problem. Because we just touched on the fact that XMPP allows two independent servers to talk to each other. So this is something you don't have. Imagine if you could use WhatsApp to talk to your user who is using Viber. Okay, so what XMPP allows is to have different systems that have been built independently to talk to each other. And this is referred to as federation. XMPP allows this. The other thing you're going to really love about XMPP is that it is supported. It has a good number of developers behind it building software that you can build your work upon. So this is a really good thing about XMPP. XMPP is worth your shot. Look at it, see if it solves your problems. And if it does, use it and take advantage of it. What we're going to cover in this playlist is um, the connection process you go through to be able to start sending messages. So I'm going to touch on this briefly here. It is, uh, all this is covered in this RFC document. You can visit it and look at what it does, but we're going to talk about it briefly here. So when you connect to your server and you put in your XMPP JID, which is your really your login credentials in XMPP, so you say, you open your app, you put in username and uh, a password. And when you hit the login button, what your client does, it tries to resolve the XMPP domain in your domain part. And what we get is an IP address and a port we can connect to using TCP. TCP connection happens. And when we can successfully connect, we pass to the step 
of establishing a secure connection that we can use to exchange data safely so that we are safe from hackers. So when we successfully establish that connection, we do SASL authentication. So we go through the process to authenticate the user. Uh, you put in your, your username and password. So we check that we have these credentials in the database. And if you pass the authentication, what we do is then resource binding. What resource binding does is to attach a resource to a particular XMPP stream. We're going to look at XMPP streams in future tutorials, so don't worry about this. But resource binding is basically what allows you to be able to connect with one account from multiple devices, okay? So just keep that in mind. And when we've done resource binding, we can then send messages to other XMPP clients. Don't worry if you don't understand all of this. We're going to cover this in detail and we're going to go through the entire process of how this happens. So I'm excited to start this video series. If you are interested in this topic, please do subscribe. I'm going to be publishing new videos as I finish them. And if you are interested in XMPP and some of the other things we talk about, please visit our website, blycontech.com. Go to our blog. We have cool things about XMPP that you can read. You can also go to our products page and visit the video courses that we have available. And please do subscribe here so that every time we publish something, you get notified. We also have a Facebook group of users where we talk about XMPP and you can join if you are interested. The link is in the description below. Okay, that's all I had to say today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.